Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hey everyone, Sue from 1A Auto here, and we're going to be installing front brakes on our 2007 Mazda 6 sedan that you can see behind me. These brakes are from 1AAuto.com. They are balanced rotors, cross-milled, and they have the exact amount of vents that the factory calls for. These are quality rotors. The pads are nice angled, so the brake dust disperse, and it keeps the cooling slot nice and open. So if you need these parts or any parts for your car, click on the link below or head on over to 1AAuto.com. So we're going to start by removing the wheel. I have it partially on the ground so I can break the lug nut free. It's a 21 millimeter socket. I got my half inch breaker bar. All right, so now that those are broken free and I can turn them by hand, I'm going to raise my vehicle. I have a two post lift. If you have a floor jack and jack stands, you do the same thing. So now with the car up in the air, we're going to remove the lug nuts and set them aside. Perfect. It's frozen on there. And this happens quite often when you have an aluminum rim with a, a steel front end. Obviously the steel and the aluminum, they oxidize together. So I'm going to show you how to take this wheel off safely. A lot of people don't think about this. I know I didn't the first couple of times I did it. Take a lug nut and just put it back on by hand. Not all the way, halfway. And now when you take your rubber mallet or your pry bar and you hit it from the other side, it doesn't fly off. I take a rubber mallet and I hit the rubber part of the tire on the back side. That came off nice and easy. Sometimes they, uh, they don't want to come off that easy and you just got to keep giving it an effort back and forth. Now we can remove that lug nut and dismount the tire. We're going to remove the caliper from the caliper bracket and I'm going to take the caliper bleeder screw boot off and catch it. <laughs> That's an eight millimeter socket or wrench. And I'm gonna break that free and let the fluid drip into the catch pan because I'm gonna push the piston back and I, uh, you, you don't want on any vehicle that has ABS, you don't wanna push that piston back with that we just closed. If the fluid goes in reverse flow, you can damage the ABS module. So with that dripping, I'm going to dismount. I'm just going to stop that actually, because I didn't dismount the actual caliper bracket yet. So you can take those two bolts out, but it is broken free, so it will be effortless when it comes to that point. These are two 14 millimeter sockets, so I'm going to disconnect the caliper sliders. Break them both free. Just pull them out by hand. And before I dismount this caliper from the bracket, I will reopen that bleeder screw. So I'm just going to crack that bleeder screw open and I'm going to remove this caliper from the caliper bracket. Make sure you have a catch pan to catch that brake fluid. At this point, I'm going to examine my caliper piston for any damage on the seal. I have no moisture coming through, no brake fluid. That's a positive sign. And uh, this is the dust boot cover for the piston. It all looks in great shape. There's no cracks on the bracket. So I'm going to push this piston back. I just use a pair of welder clamps and watch the aim of that fluid because it's going to come out. This also is the right way to do a brake job in the sense of you'll know if your caliper piston is sticking, if you have a frozen caliper. And it's kind of a defeated the job if you, your caliper piston is no good and you put new pads on with rotors. You'll be able to tell if it's frozen, if it sticks. You'll know when it hits bottom, it's, it's oops, flush right with the actual caliper. Now with that clamp in place holding the piston back. I'm going to close the bleeder screw. 
I don't want any air going in reverse. Now you can take the clamp off. Now I like to take a bungee cord and I'm gonna safely set this caliper aside. You never wanna hang it from the actual flex hose. It can do damage to that. So I'll just take advantage of the upper control rod. Swing it up, it's out of the way. So now that I've removed the caliper piston, section of the caliper rack with the caliper bracket and the two pads and this is the caliper hardware kit so you've got the anti-rattle clips two of them and this one is broken so this is a good time that you when you're ordering your parts look up the caliper hardware and order it because this is you're going to need this now and you're started your brake job with pads and rotors but you don't have the actual hardware just a couple more dollars and it's worth it because these do rot out and they lose their spring and tension and they stop the pads from make a clatter sound. They add tension to it. And you'll also get new tins, which will save you time from cleaning them up and if they're rusted, you're gonna need them. So now I'm gonna dismount the caliper bracket, 17 millimeter socket or wrench. You get two of them, one on the top and one on the bottom. And then the reason why I'm taking the bracket off before the pads, I tried to take the pads off, but they're stuck in the actual caliper bracket. So I'll end up having to hammer them out once I take the bracket out of the way. You'll be able to see the surface of this rotor once this caliper bracket with pads move off and the rotted metal. Inadequate stopping. So to remove the rotor from the hub, this has two mounting screws that just holds the rotor in place. That's what the manufacturer uh, chose to do. Some cars do it, some cars don't. So I have an impact screwdriver, which is you, you lock it in place and hammer it. So if you don't have an impact screwdriver, you can try to use a Phillips. It's more difficult because the actual hamming slide gives it a twist. Um, you could try tapping it with a hammer around the hub just to loosen it up and, or spray it with a some sort of penetrating spray. You could go to 1aauto.com. We actually sell the impact screwdriver. So now that I have the mounting screws off, I'm just gonna spray in where the hub goes, just to try to give it some help along the way, because we're gonna end up having to hit this with a hammer. Just wake up the neighbor's dog. <laughs> I'm gonna hit the rotor surface, because I'm replacing the rotor and not hit the hub because I don't want to miss and, and hit the threads on the lug nut. You see it started to move. I go back and forth. I'm working that back and forth and all the rust is coming out between the hub and the rotor. Now with it, I know that it's loosened up, I'll hit it from the back surface. A little stubborn. It's just a matter of working that rust out. Wonderful. Before I mount my new rotor on this hub, as you can see the trouble we had taking it off and the rust that forms from New England weather or any climate that has moisture than hot and cold, I strongly recommend you clean this hub surface. So I'm using a brass bristle brush here and I'm just gonna get in there. And I'm gonna use some parts cleaner and just keep working it around there and then clean it and do it again. Repeat the process. If you don't have a clean surface when the rotor goes back on, you can really, the odds are you'll have brake pulsation because your wheel will be tightened. But if that hub is not sitting flush with that rotor, you'll get a, a wobble. Now I can see that I have a rust spot that formed here from the, the rotor has that one hole. So we have some rust. That came out pretty good. So here we have a front brakes rotors and pads from 1aauto.com. It is a nice cross tread 
milling on the rotor surface. They have the exact amount of vents as the factory and they are balanced. They have the two mounting screws that go onto the hub. This is the old rotor. You can tell that uh, they obviously needed brakes. <laughs> so we have the same weight, same diameter. The new one is balanced. That's fabulous. And then we have our pads that came off of this vehicle. I wouldn't say they're factory, but I would say the nice difference between this pad and the pad from One Auto is it has that angled mill, which helps brake dust disperse so it doesn't get caught in the cooling vent and you don't hear any squeaking and noise. So if you need these parts or any parts for your car, head on over to 1AAuto.com. So now that the pads were frozen in the bracket, and that's why I'm going to show you how to take them off outside of the caliper bracket over here. Um, I can notice now that I have them out and looking at them, see the separation here and here. Uh, that's a pretty good sign of a cheap pad. The bonding in the back here is how they're attached to the metal bracket is coming undone. And these pads have not many miles on by the looks of them. But once again, the bonding is coming undone. They're separating. What would happen as you go down the road, you wouldn't know it because you can't see this. The bonding will come completely undone and that pad will just fall right out and then you'll have a metal bracket against a rotor and your pedal will drop. So now we're going to hit the pad out of the bracket. I'm going to disassemble the hardware. So I'm going to clean up this bracket. and clean the hardware up. If you don't have a ways of cleaning up, the, you could always order the hardware with your pads and rotors on 1AAuto.com. We do sell the caliper brackets and hardware for most vehicles. So now I'm gonna take my wire brush. I've got my caliper bracket out in the open. I'm gonna with my bristles, metal bristles, I'm gonna take this rust off so I can clean this all down, then reinstall the tins with some caliper lube underneath. And the reason you do this, you take the rust off the bracket, is that is actually picking up the distance and that's why the pads were stuck in there. They couldn't slide freely. You want your pads to slide for even wear and proper braking. I'm just going to give it a clean, use my parts cleaner spray. I'm going to let that air dry while I'm going to take the brush to my old hardware because it's still in good shape. It's not rusted, it's, the clips aren't missing. So I'm going to reuse this. I'm just going to clean the rust off of it. So I'm going to take my bracket out of the cleaning bucket and I'm going to put in my tins and just going to spray these down. I scraped all the uh, dirt off of them. So while I'm letting my tins dry, I'm going to pull out my slider pins. I'm going to inspect the boots too. And I'm going to dismount these first, inspect my boots. You can pull the boot completely off. You want to make sure there's no holes, tears, that they're in good shape. If there's any holes or tears, water will get into the chamber in here. And the caliper slider pin, that's what it does. It slides back and forth as you apply the brake pedal and release it so that the pads don't rub on the rotor at all times. If this has a hole in it, water gets in there. That's what we call a seized pin. That'll be down. It won't be moving up and down. We won't be able to get it in there and your pad will stick calls uneven wear and uh, you'll end up doing a brake job sooner than you need to. So I'm going to take a rag and I'll clear it off all the old grease. Now if you have a wire wheel at home, you can wire wheel, wheel the top part here 
This is a rubber bushing, so don't touch that. That's another thing you want to inspect. Make sure that that bushing is still there. It's not swollen and it's not torn up. If it's missing, you need to replace it. I'm just going to spray, get some of that rust off. And wipe it down, make sure that looks fine. It's not pitted and it's not ready to fall apart. It's still solid. Now I can clean out the inside here. Sometimes you can take a, a horning brush. Um, I don't have one here, so I can't imagine that you would too, unless you do it all day long. So I use like a small screwdriver and a pretty sturdy rag. And I'm just gonna pack it down in there and make sure it comes up with some of that old grease and uh, clear of any rust. It takes a little time, but it's worth it in the long run because you know you did your brake job the best you could. I'm going to spray in there. Make sure there's no particles in there that fell in. Let that dry and I'm going to repeat the process on this side. So now to reassemble our caliper bracket. I've got my boots. I clean above any old caliper grease. I'm going to put some new stuff in there right at the uh, right inside that boot. That's going to help that pin at the end where that rust was built up, hopefully not built up again. I'm going to install the boot, just a little finesse. Do the same to the other side. Now with both our boots on, it's safe to get, put the pins on. You'll see there is a difference in the height. So I know that the on this particular bracket, you can see the shortest. See it? So you make sure you install them in the correct way. This can very easily happen completely backwards and you probably won't know until you try to mount the caliper onto the bracket. One will be up higher than the other. So just take your time, pay attention, and put it together. So now you take your caliper grease, put a light coat on the pin. I like to put just a little extra dab on the end so it goes down into the shaft of the caliper bracket. And this is the shorter one. So I'm gonna slide that in. I spin it around, make sure she's making a mix in there. <laughs> mix it up. Do the same on this side. Put an extra dab on the end. Put her on in. You don't want dry pins, they will seize, but they also can cause a banging when you apply the brake pedal. You'll hear a thumping noise. So now I'm gonna install the anti-rattle clip. It goes like that. So you, your guide pin's straight up, and these fins are facing that way, so it puts pressure on the pad, stops it from rattling. Do the same on this side. Now I'm going to install some caliper grease just on the bracket, just on the caliper bracket, on all four points. This will stop rust from forming and pushing that tin upward into the pad, which would cause it to seize up on the bracket. That's good. Now we're just going to install the tins. They're kind of self-explanatory. The backing goes against the back. The flat side goes on the inside where the rotor will be hitting. And then it locks in. Just push it down. So there is an in and out side to that. So now I'm gonna install my new rotor on the hub, just like that, because I'm gonna clean the surface. I'm gonna take off the protective film that they put on it so it doesn't rust when it's on the storage shelf. I have a catch basin down here. Catch some of my parts cleaner. I'm just gonna flip, reverse it around. So now with this process, before I put it on to clean it, I'm gonna add a little anti-seize to my hub for my surface of my 
brake rotor. Nice light coat. I just want to avoid any uh, aggravation in the future of things seizing up. I just want to get it so that it stays rusting. I'm going to remount the rotor, lining up my mounting holes, which is two, one there, one there. And I'm going to reinstall those before I clean the rotor. Once again, I'm using an impact screwdriver. So once these are bottomed out, you hammer them on, just a tap with a twist of this. And that assures that you have a nice surface mounting to the from the rotor to the hub. Now I'm just going to clean the protective surface on the outside. Now I'm going to install my caliper bracket with the two mounting bolts. These are 17 millimeter sockets. I'm just going to snuggle down finger tight and then I'm going to torque them to spec. So the mounting brackets, bolts for the caliper bracket is 79 foot pounds. So now I'm going to install my pads on my bracket. That was the inner, we're going to do it the outer. Sometimes you might have to move the anti-rattle tin up and out of the way. Now you can put in your anti-rattle butterfly pins. There's one on the top and one for the bottom. So now I'm going to dismount my caliper that I had mounted up in the, this bungee cord. I could slide right on. Mount these bolts on. These are 14 millimeter sockets. Put them on by hand. So now I'm going to tighten my caliper bracket bolts. And there's no torque for these, so I just like to snug them up. It's probably about equals to about 14, I mean 18 to 20 foot pounds. Now that that's all set, and your side of your brakes over here. You can do your brakes on the passenger side in reverse procedure, same way we did them over here. And then we're going to lower the vehicle and check our brake fluid. I'm going to check my brake fluid, come up here to the master, take the cover off. The fluid level is just a smidge below. This is full and it's right there, so I'm going to top it off. Before adding brake fluid, always check your manufacturer's cap. It should tell you what kind of fluid this one says dot three only, so make sure you're putting dot three brake fluid into this master. I'm going to install my cover, make sure there's no dirt, make sure the boot's down in position, lock it down. Because I opened my bleeder screw to push the piston back, I'm just going to gravity bleed it after I've topped off my master. I'm going to open this bleeder screw. and just watch any air bubbles coming out. Make sure I don't have any. Shouldn't have any, but it's, you always need to check. Looks good to me. I'm just gonna tighten her up. Spray it down and clean it. And re put the rubber boot that came with it back on to keep that bleeder screw clean. So now I'm just gonna clean this. If any brake fluid, reapply my rubber boot cap. You're going to do the same to the other side. So now I'm just going to remount my tire, put it up against the hub, put my lug nuts on, hand tight. I'm just going to hand tighten them with my socket. Then I'm going to lower it down on the ground. And I'm going to torque these to 83 foot pounds. So now I'm going to torque my wheels at 83 foot pounds in a star pattern. That just helps make sure that the seat of the rim is seated correctly against the hub. I'm 
Let me double check it real quick. There you go. So now that my front brake job is complete, I have gravity bled my front brake calipers and they're all tight and fluid is full in my master. I'm gonna pump my brakes up. And that's gonna assure that piston on that both calipers that I've pushed back are gonna be seated before I stop my car up. It's nice firm, it's right there. So now we're ready to road test the vehicle. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.